What's up everybody, it's Henry again with the PSI Defense Channel coming to you with another video. Um, in my last video, uh, you guys saw me upgrade my TA.1 with an Instinct Industries um, Index Mag Release Adapter. or well, not adapter, but modification. Um, what I mean by index is if you're right-handed, um, usually you have to adjust your grip to press the mag release with your thumb. But with this new Instinct Industries, you can see it right there, Instinct Industries um, passenger side or index release, all you have to do, maintain your same grip, use your index finger to release. It was a rather lengthy video. So with my SMG, I'm going to do the same thing but since I gave you all the info and everything, I figured I'd do a shorter version and then let you know that I also, um, this time around, decided to um, show you a little bit about how you should prep your mags. Because what you have to do is take your magazines. You see, your magazines have slot and it only goes halfway across this rail that runs the entire length of the back side of your magazine. So what you have to do is you have to extend that slot all the way across so it doesn't stop halfway. And what I did with this one, I went out into the garage and used my Dremel and what it did, it got uh, metal shavings everywhere. So it took me about 20 minutes or so to tear this magazine apart go inside and get all as many of the metal shavings as I could out of the inner works of this mag because the last thing you want to do is shove metal shavings inside of your air marker because they're seals um, you know what and what seals need it needs a rubber o-ring um, sealed on a smooth surface and there's little pinhole uh, valves in this thing and you don't want that clogged up with metal if you have, you know, if you have it lubed and you have uh, grease inside of it, that'll stick to the grease and it'll get all gunked up. Uh, just the same way you don't want metal shavings in a transmission or in an engine, you definitely don't want these in your marker as well. So, what I did, as you can see, taped up everything except for the exposed part that I'll be shaving, and I got a little OCD with this uh, taping the entire thing. But I think that's a good thing because metal shavings are very small and they'll get everywhere. So as you see, I did all my T8.1 mags. First started out taping up this entire side. There's ribs on here. You might not think they're holes, but metal shavings can get on there. Um, then taped it up a little more. Then finally said, you know what, I'm going for the gusto and got this taped. And I don't recommend you use a Dremel Although it'll be faster, just use regular flat file. The metal is soft enough, it won't take long. You have more control and there's less metal shavings that'll get everywhere. Do not shave your mags down in your work area where you're tearing apart your, mag your uh, markers because you don't want that metal shaving uh, everywhere. So just my advice, uh, what I did, I'll show you, I completely disassembled the magazines. So you take one Allen key, depress the spring, take another Allen key, and this hole in the bottom, take that out, put your finger on that hole because that, that spring is going to shoot out. Boom. Take the follower out. I even unscrewed the CO2 a hold down screw or whatever you call it. And then once you have it stripped down with spring, follower, screw, and cap off your magazine, then you tape it up. Then what you do, you just take your flat file and then dig it easy, then you go to work on it. So I'm not gonna show you that in this video. Like I said, I'm gonna try to make this a short video. So if you need to reference this when you're doing uh, your mag release uh, swap that you know you won't have to go through all the info that I gave you on the last video since I had the marker open and I showed you internal stuff and all kinds of stuff so I'm gonna get right to it guys okay guys in the interest of time I've already 
I removed my reflex sight and my foregrip. So um, let's get to it. So I have no mag, so the barrel will come out easily. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about your eBay barrels, um, they are milled to be used with the T8.1 uh, as well as the T9.1. That's why you have two, uh, two seats here. So when you install it in your T8.1, if you turn it all the way, you'll see some threads here. Now, um, that's so that in the T9.1, you have the ability to uh, hopper feed this thing. But since we are mag feeding only in the T8.1, then when you, if you see uh, threads through the top, just back it up about a quarter turn. And once it seats again, you should be able to see into the breech and everything should be fine. But we're disassembling, so we're gonna set the barrel there, the bolt spring. All right, I'm gonna remove the rear Allen bolt first that also goes into your regulator. So when you reassemble, always give that a really good crank down. Set that there. I'm gonna save the middle one because remember that's spring-loaded for your uh, safety there. Remove the front one. Remember the front one always has that washer. I've actually got it double stacked in this one just to be safe. So I'm going to leave that in there. Now down through the trigger guard, straight into the Allen hole. Kind of hold it together because that spring is going to want to push it apart. Okay, there's that nut. And that spring is gonna fall right out of there. Okay, you can actually do this part at the beginning or the end. This is the uh, pin that holds your trigger in place. So, you should just be able to take the Allen key and push straight through. See how easy that was, opposed to uh, my other T8.1. When you clean your markers and keep them uh, well maintained that shouldn't be an issue for you. All right, so just gently pull it up. The trigger should actually slide right out of there. Yep. Make sure you still have your O-ring. And since we don't have to do anything with the internals, um, I'm just going to set this aside because this is what we came here for. This is... So let me get some more light in here. All right, just so you guys can see. Sorry for the redundancy. I know I did a lot of this last video. But here is your spring. You need to take that loose because see here is the mag release that we're replacing. See it move? And that spring in there needs to come out. Let me try on camera with the hook. Oh, I almost had it. Yeah, that, that's going to come out of there. Okay, then push it forward. See that? Now that's going to come right out. I'm just going to pull the spring away from the mag release. There, once you got it cleared, you can just pull it straight out of there. Then, you know, I'm going to leave the spring in place. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rotate it 180 degrees. This mod, uh, take the. Now oh, that's going to stay in there, sorry. So for this mod, the spring has to be curved. Sorry, guys. 
to the right. Just like a conventional question mark. It has to be curved this way. As you'll see when I get the new mag release in there. Big ups to Instinct Industries. Really sweet packaging there, guys. All right. Really sweet branding on this. I love this diamond pattern and the logo. Let you know you got something special going on in your marker. Okay, so the logo is going to be facing the front of your marker. It's going to go in from the driver's side or the left side. So what you're going to want to do, since I left my spring in there, this is not easy with a light in my face, standing up and looking through a camera, but you know what, that's not going to be the easiest way, so I'm just going to pull that out of there, I'm just going to pull it out of there. All right, facing forward, your channels, if you're holding the gun, holding the marker, muzzle would be that way. You want your channels facing you and insert it with the logo side first. Okay, and that's what it should look like. Where your index, If you're right holding it in your right hand, where your index finger should hit that diamond pattern and you should see the Instinct Industries logo right side up okay I'm gonna get my spring back in there and where's those tweezers it's my little watch kit all right remember you want it sitting in there like a question mark All right. I'll line up that channel see how it's offset line it up so that your spring can go down in there nice and easy there we go sorry it's kind of a slot because I know the FSC has a distinct hole down in there, but TA.1 has kind of a slot and then the hole is in that slot. There we go. All right. So I'm going to pull my spring out some so I can get it seated. Pull it over. Boom. It's in there. So if you have a pick, just push it in, make sure it's seated well. You want to make sure that it doesn't pop out and spring pop out of place because when you need this thing to function, you're going to want it to function properly. See, there's a little bit of... Okay. So, it was getting caught up. Luckily, I have this pick. Can you see that? Down in here, where the body was glued together, there's some glue. I don't know if they use epoxy or not. But since the spring wasn't designed to bend this way, or it never bent that way, it was free to flex that way but flexing this way it ran into this blob of epoxy so I'm actually going to take this out clean that epoxy and then redo it I'm going to pause the video just a moment okay guys I've got it working let me show you what happened I thought it was that blob of epoxy it was not but since I had to remove this spring a few times I found the, the easy way I guess 
I take my 90 degree angle pick, if you guys can see this, I stick it behind the spring, and I just push forward and twist. Yeah, it comes right out. Hope you guys saw that. I'll do it again. Okay. Stick it in there. Apparently that light is in my face. Trying to get an angle for you guys. All right. Stick it in there, push and twist, and it pops right out. Okay, so what I had to do, guys, it was not the blob of epoxy. What it was is my spring. It's usually not this closed. It usually sticks out further. It's almost sticking out like this. The question mark shape. The question mark shape went out like this, but I smashed it down because what was happening when the spring would press against the mag release. I don't know if that's how the mag release was. Maybe it has a little piece of metal from their CNC process in here or something. But it was getting caught on the lip here and causing it to click like that you can even see where it was scratching the anodized coating so what I did I smashed it closed I still wanted to have this curve here this curve right here because that's what it presses against this wall here so that everything is nice and hunky dory so let's go ahead and get along with this install stick that back in there start guys I'm sorry so. all right get it seated hopefully you guys saw that of course if you have any questions I'm very happy to answer them in the in the comment section but as you can see it's working fine so you may have to bend in the little question mark part of your spring there but yeah that's perfect and along with your properly filed magazines let's get one before I put this guy together I'm gonna make sure everything is working good shouldn't have to slam your magazine in there too hard at first it wasn't catching in my other one so I would have to push it real hard so I had to I had to file this part down a little bit more, but should be able to that was great. You should just have to be able to push it in. It should catch. Shouldn't wiggle too much, and no more readjusting your grip to get that out. Just take your index finger. Boom. Boom. This is amazing. Love it. works perfectly so all right you know I'm not gonna put it back together in this video if you have questions about that the previous video will show you how to reinstall or uh, reassemble your marker from this point on but instinct industries index side mag release definitely worth the 25 bucks go check them out link will be in the description thanks a lot guys take care of yourselves